Hi, it's Dwyer. It is May the 16th, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a sports betting site. It's free. Keepingitfree.blogspot.com, a financial blog I run that has uh, had more than a million views. Let's try to get an edge on what's happening in the Bitcoin space and figure it out, right? While most of the world is trying to figure out whether or not Bitcoin is worth it, what I'm doing is looking at decentralized finance right now and trying to pick investment vehicles coins that will play a role in a more maturing Bitcoin market. So, if you understand the emerging Bitcoin ecosystem, it could be very lucrative to you, especially since the market's just coming together and you have several severely undervalued, in my opinion, Right? And please, don't construe what I'm saying here as investment advice. I'm just giving you my opinion, telling you what I'm doing. Right? You have several severely undervalued parts of the Bitcoin ecosystem because people are unaware about what's coming next. Let's speculate. We're speculators here. Let's speculate on what's coming next. Now, there are those who argue that Bitcoin is too slow to serve as a currency, right? What I want people to do is to think about the gold standard here for a moment, because, of course, we've always heard that gold is uh, too clunky to carry around and too expensive to carry around to do transactions. Think of the gold standard and think of the concept of people carrying around dollars backed by gold. That's how it used to be in the United States. Right? I gave you a dollar, you understood that that dollar was backed by gold. Right? That's how it was. It wasn't until the United States, in its effort to finance the Vietnam War, realized that it didn't have the gold to support the dollars. That led to Nixon taking us off the gold standard officially. Right, And then, of course, we came up with the idea of the petrodollar. Now, before I get too deep in the weeds there, just understand the concept of a dollar backed by gold. That means that there's going to be scarcity of dollars. It takes power away from the central bank. Right? The currency is based on the supply of gold in the world. So, if the recipient of a financial transaction believes in gold, they'll take your dollars. Because even though it's just a piece of paper, it's a piece of paper that actually represents an amount of gold, which you know is scarce. It's not infinite, which you know is not subject to the whims of politicians. They can't go out there and just create $2 trillion more of gold, right? You understand the basic tenet of economics, the idea of supply and demand, the idea of scarcity. You get that the dollar has value because it's backed by a scarce resource. Well, what I want people to consider here is the Bitcoin standard. Not Bitcoin as a currency, but Bitcoin like gold as a store of value. Now, I know there are critics out there and God bless them. I understand there are Peter Schiff's on every other corner, right? I get that people are afraid that they're going to kill the electricity and so you won't have access to your Bitcoin and things like that. These are the same people who don't realize there's a risk that your bank might take some of your deposits, a bail-in like they did in Cyprus, 
or that there might be a bank holiday, your bank might not even open while it figures out what the government wants to do next with your assets. So, I want people to understand the import of the concept of a Bitcoin standard. It throws out the window the idea that Bitcoin is too slow to use in financial transactions. Right? People say, hey, the miners take too long to process the transaction. There's too much of a delay. I need to buy my coffee and I want to drink it while it's hot. I don't want to pay in Bitcoin and then have the transaction take so long to clear that before the barista gives me the coffee, the coffee is cold. Right? What they're missing is the potential for and the current this is the important part of this video. The current existence of Bitcoin-backed payment systems. Just like you have the gold standard, you have the Bitcoin standard, right? Right now, we have ways where Bitcoin is backing faster payment systems. So, just like you don't have to lug around a hundred ounces of gold to make a big purchase because it's heavy, it's clunky, right? Just like you can take cash and we'll pretend that the U.S. is still under a gold standard. It's not. But let's say this is the 1960s right before Nixon. Just like in the 1960s, I could actually walk into a car dealership, for example, with dollars and pay cash, legal tender in the United States, right? Pay cash for a car. Everyone wins. I get the car I want. The dealer gets cash. That is legal tender that he could turn around and spend. And, of course, we both knew the cash was backed by gold. Well, right now, right, let's say Bitcoins weigh a thousand pounds, right, just for purposes of this analogy. Understand, I could leave the Bitcoin with the custodian. There are ERC-20 coins right now that are backed by Bitcoin, just like the U.S. dollar used to be backed by gold. You need to figure out the ecosystem because understand, Bitcoin's going to be with us a long time. Even if you feel, like I do, that there's some more efficient payment systems, they don't have the hash rate of Bitcoin. Bitcoin also has first mover status and the consumer recognition that comes with that first mover status. Many people get into cryptocurrency by buying Bitcoin first. Right? Bitcoin's the big name. Bitcoin's the hardest to hack. So what I want people to do is to realize that right now, right now, you have different coins that are backed by Bitcoin that would allow you to go into a store that accepts these coins and do a quick transaction with Bitcoin backing the transaction. Let's name some of the coins here. Wrapped Bitcoin. The symbol is WBTC. I am Bitcoin. Right? I am BTC. The name of it is Token I am. Right? S BTC. That's on the Synthetics Network. REN, R-E-N, B-T-C. 
T, BTC, which is on the Keep Network. This is where crypto is going. Right? It's going to allow you to make fast transactions under a Bitcoin standard. They'll be backed by Bitcoin. But it'll be like carrying around a light credit card instead of a 1,000 pound bar of Bitcoin. Right? You won't have to worry too much about the speed of the transaction. The transaction will be based in part on smart contracts. Understand the issue isn't whether or not digital currency is technologically superior to paper fiat currency. It is. It has the capability to actually engage in smart contracts. You have things called price oracles that will monitor the price of the collateral backing the currency you use. Right? That's where Chainlink comes in. Right? I believe in Chainlink. I'm trying to buy Chainlink right now. I believe in synthetics. I'm hoping to get some synth synthetics. Let's say it's on my short list. Right? Yesterday I was thinking, should I buy Alibaba, a, the Chinese equivalent of Amazon, or should I buy synthetics? I already had some chain link. I decided to buy some Alibaba, which I like as well, right? Just in the regular stock world. But just understand, synthetics is on my list of things to buy because I get the fact that what Bitcoin is going to do is it's going to reintroduce the American consumer to the idea of money, not currency, but money that has a limited supply so that as I'm doing transactions, the merchant knows he's getting money that's separate from whatever the state is doing. Right? We don't talk about printing presses when we're talking about Bitcoin, right? Let me also say too, I know politicians love to impose sanctions on places, right? And say, hey, we're not gonna allow you to do this in our market and stuff like that. For those of you, let me raise my hand, who believe that's antithetical to capitalism, who believe that if we're talking about my money, then it's my money. Right? Who believe that you really lose credibility in the monetary system that you're pushing. The minute you say, hey, at any time, some politicians can jump out the weeds here and impose sanctions on the currency we're dealing with. Then Bitcoin, simply put, is a superior payment mechanism. It's a superior store of value. Let me say too, this is an asymmetrical trade. Many of the coins I'm talking about here, Chainlink for example, are going for under $4 a coin. Just understand that if cryptocurrency continues to take off, and I want people to pay close attention to the market cap of all cryptos, if it continues to attract money, and understand that market cap, while it's grown big time, it's still under $300 billion. 
right? You have several American companies that are worth more than the market cap of all of the cryptocurrencies combined. And I'm not talking about the Googles, the Apples. I'm talking about mid-level companies, right? Just to understand if consumers start to figure out that they could make instantaneous payments backed by Bitcoin on their phones quickly in this COVID-19 world contactless if they realize too that they aren't at the level of risk that the people in Cyprus were that your neighbors with fiat currency that, by the way, is no longer under the gold standard, hasn't been for decades, since the early 70s. If they realize that the Bitcoin world has more scarcity than the fiat currency world, then they'll start to realize the value in the cryptocurrencies. That's what we call them. They're really software involved in the collateralized Bitcoin digital currency market. Right? Understand the players involved. You have stable coins. You'll have to research this. But you have stable coins. You have Ethereum. Right? They're the people who built the ERC-20 coin token system. You have Price Oracles, Chainlink, right? You have decentralized finance facilitators, Kyber Network. Maybe the equation that we've been thinking about up until now, will Bitcoin win? Will Bitcoin Cash win? Will Bitcoin SV win? Will Dash win? Right, maybe the paradigm that has Bitcoin maximalists and others saying, no, my old coin can win. Maybe that paradigm is incorrect. Because maybe, in fact, there are vehicles in the cryptocurrency world that can be backed by Bitcoin. Maybe smart contracts can actually be extended to other coins. Maybe vendors understand that as long as there is Bitcoin being held by a custodian, and maybe that custodian doesn't have to be a physical custodian, maybe it can actually be verified through smart contracts digitally, then you're talking about a world that has the fiat currency world playing catch-up. In the coming months, China's central bank is going to issue a digital currency. Many other central banks are going to flirt with issuing digital currencies. Right, folks, they cannot compete. They, they simply cannot compete with what's already been built in the Bitcoin world, in the current cryptocurrency space. Understand, whatever bells and whistles, whatever paint job they put on the central currency issued by the People's Bank of China, right, that central, that digital currency is going to continue to be subject to the whims of politicians. Right? If they issue a digital currency here in the United States, you're still going to have situations where it's an election year and the president and Congress decide to just issue $2 trillion more of the currency as part of what they're calling a bailout. Right? They'll put some extra names on it too, stimulus checks and stuff like that. Right? The genius of current cryptocurrency is that it's money outside of the state 
Let me make another point. One of the geniuses of the current cryptocurrency system, Bitcoin in particular, is that it's money, not currency. Right? Currency is something you can just create out of thin air that doesn't have scarcity. Bitcoin has scarcity. Today, it costs more than $8,500 to mine a Bitcoin. Right? Your, your president can't just, your central bank can't just pass a rule and say, hey, there's a virus, we need to print more. You actually have something called price discovery where you get to figure out market conditions by actually looking at the price of a Bitcoin. Right? You're not wondering about yield curve manipulation on bonds and things like that. Who here watching this video would think about buying a Japanese bond? Right? So, just understand the debt markets are developing in cryptocurrency. The collateralization of financial transactions using a Bitcoin standard are developing quickly in decentralized finance. Right? While many today are saying, gee, do I believe in Bitcoin? While some others are saying, what is a Bitcoin? Understand that in some parts of the cryptosphere, you're already dealing with a Bitcoin standard. So this is what I'm looking at. I want you to do your own research and follow your own ideas. Uh, please don't consider anything I've said in this video to constitute financial advice. Let me also direct people to a recent article in Forbes uh, where they talk about Bitcoin invading decentralized finance. It is written by Lior Shimron, who does an excellent job reporting on cryptocurrency. Right? If you just keep abreast of the developments in the space, if you just keep abreast of the stable coins that are out there, right? Coins that mirror the prices of certain currencies, right? Things like dollars, for example. If you just keep abreast of news concerning smart contracts and price oracles, you're going to uncover some breathtaking values right now among the altcoins in the space that aren't adverse to Bitcoin, but actually in furtherance of Bitcoin usage and market penetration. These altcoins are actually allowing the development of RAP Bitcoin, uh, Token Ion, uh, SBTC, right? Bitcoin backed vehicles, right? By backed, I mean financial vehicles that allow for collateralized Bitcoin usage. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your message, your comments in the comment section of this video. If there are other coins that you feel are well positioned to piggyback off Bitcoin, if there are recent developments you want to talk about, if you take exception to things I've said in this video, and I know every time I mention cryptocurrency, I'll have three comments in the comment section that say Bitcoin's going to zero. Fair enough. Go ahead and leave those comments. Right? Bitcoin's a scam. Okay. Go ahead and leave those comments. But let's not dispute that Bitcoin has more scarcity than fiat U.S. dollars right now that are being printed in the trillions in a short period of time. Just look at the Fed's balance sheet. That's how I see it. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.